welcome to the course business analytics and data mining modeling using r so in uh, previous few lectures we have been discussing artificial neural networks uh, specifically in the previous lecture we were doing an exercise in r using our uh, used cars data set and uh, uh, there uh, we uh, discussed uh, different uh, steps that we executed were uh, related to uh, variable transformation and normalization that were required and then the formula and so we'll uh, again uh, restart that exercise and uh, we'll do our modeling and discuss some of uh, the important uh, issues that we face in neural network so before uh, going into our studio let's uh, discuss few important issues uh, in modeling exercise so one of the uh, imp um, one of the key issues that we uh, typically uh, face in neural network modeling is overfitting so uh, tip it is uh, more likely that model will will overfit the data in a neural network modeling scenario uh, so how do we overcome this situation so uh, typically error on validation and test partition would be large in comparison to training partition so first we need to detect uh, whether a neural network is overfitting so uh, typically when we build a uh, when we uh, train a neural network model uh, then uh, we uh, can check the performance on a uh, training partition itself and then performance on validation and test partition and we would see that uh, error is quite uh, uh, you know uh, quite small in comparison uh, quite uh, small for training partition in comparison to that of in a validation and testing partition so that is how we will know that uh, probably the neural network is overfitting to the data therefore uh, we need to uh, limit the uh, training or learning process of uh, neural network so that this overfitting could be avoided because as we have been talking about the objective in uh, data mining modeling in prediction classification and other types of task uh, other types of data mining task the objective is uh, that our model should be performing well in new data so a uh, few things that can be tried out is uh, one limit the number of epochs so number of times so num number of sweeps uh, through the data uh, that we uh, have to do in neural network uh, learning process training process that can be limited so that uh, network uh, you know so that network just fits the uh, uh, key information uh, that is there in predictors and not starts fitting to the noise now another approach uh, could be uh, a, a plot of validation error versus number of effects uh, that could be used to find out the best number of uh, effects uh, for training so we can always look for point of uh, minimum validation error something similar uh, that we have been doing in uh, previous few techniques as well wherein we used to uh, create this kind of plot so in this case it is going to be number of effects on x axis and error it could be uh, you know for training and validation so typically this this uh, this kind of plot we have been uh, you know generating in other techniques also so typically uh, for any data mining technique typically the training error will uh, plot curve for training error will go like this and the as we keep on uh, as we keep on training our model the error will keep on uh, decreasing and it will reach to zero uh, however for new data that is validation partition the error will keep on decreasing but uh, at one time at one point it would be minimum and then again it will start increasing so this is the point that we are looking for so this is the minimum uh, validation error point uh, point of minimum validation error that we are looking for so we would like to stop the learning process of uh, uh, our neural network at this point so we would like to stop here and uh, this particular so the network which i have been trained uh, which i have been trained uh, up to this point uh, these many number of epochs right so if this is n so these many number of epochs uh, that would probably perform better on new data so uh, however uh, of course uh, this uh, uh you know this criteria whether we have to take number of epochs here or some other parameter related to the uh, training process or learning process of neural network would actually depend on the implementation of neural network in the software so we'll see 
uh, what kind of uh, plot we require to find out this uh, point of uh, minimum validation error in our case uh, using R. So, let us uh, go back to our studio environment. So, the uh, data set that we were using in uh, that we uh, in the previous lecture uh, used cars the last exercise that we were doing. So, let us uh, so let us load this library x less x. So, let us uh, import this data set used cars. So, a small data set about the used car. So, the uh, task is uh, to as you can see environment section 79 observations uh, 11 variables. So, the task is to uh, uh, build a model for predicting the used cars price. Uh, let us remove any columns and rows. So, we are already familiar with this data set these are the variables uh, as used in the uh, previous lecture as well. Let us create age add it to the data frame. Let us take a backup, uh, we will exclude the uh, variables that we do not want to uh, you know take forward for our modeling. So, these are the variables now. Now, uh, as we did in previous lecture, let us go through uh, the transformation process. So, this part we have discussed before in previous lecture. So, we will just quickly go through this the scaling of uh, the numeric variables and then we will create a data frame that would uh, finally, be used for our modeling exercise. So, this is the data frame d f 2 and you would see these are the variables price is our outcome variable and others are predictors and you would see all the uh, values uh, for all the variables they are in 0 to 1 scale. Now, uh, we will uh, do our partitioning. So, 90 percent and 10 percent 90 percent for training partition because this is a small data set. So, we would like to use uh, you know higher percentage of observation for our training partition. So, let us uh, do our partitioning. So, only 10 percent of the observation that is about 8 observation would be there in test partition and the remaining uh, 71 are going to be used in the training partition. Now, as uh, we have discussed neural net is the package that we require uh, that we have been using for our neural network model. So, it has been loaded. We have already discussed the neural network structure that we would be following for this particular exercise. So, we talked about that uh, there are 9 variables, so one being the outcome variable. So, we will have 8 predictors effectively. So, therefore, 8 nodes in the input layer and uh, then uh, uh, you know uh, we will take uh, typically uh, we take one hidden layer and uh, one more. Uh, you know we can always do experimentation with the number of uh, you know hidden layers and also number of nodes that are there. So, we will uh, for our uh, illustration purpose we will take just uh, 9 nodes uh, one more than the number of predictors here and the output layer just one node that is uh, for the uh, our outcome variable. Now, this particular argument linear dot output has to be true for a prediction model. So, uh, let us create the formula. So, you can we can use as dot formula function and uh, here the price being the outcome variable. So, all other variable will be collapsed. Uh, using plus sign uh, and uh, we will get that a string of uh, all the uh, predictors. So, this will be our formula. So, let us create this. Now, a number of epochs. So, as we have discussed this particular thing. So, one epoch means uh, you know all the observations, so iterations uh, of all the observations. So, let us compute this uh, since uh, df2 train. So, number of observation training partitions. So, uh, so that would be a one epoch. So, one epoch will have uh, 71 uh, runs through the network, 71 observation that are there in the training partition. Now, in the modeling, modeling you would see that now they are uh, typically be required. We are required to do you know um, uh, you know higher level of experimentation in a neural network modeling because there are so many things that can be changed for example, number of hidden layers, nodes that are there in hidden layers and a few other things that we will discuss for example, threshold value. So, uh, what is threshold value here? So, quite uh, similar concepts uh, we have been using in previous technique. For example, we will look at the neural net, uh, network uh, you know function in the help page we will uh, get down here and we will see that what is threshold a numeric value specifying the threshold uh, for the partial derivatives of the error function 
as a stopping criteria. So, this is the in this uh, the implementation of neural network that we are using here neural net function. Uh, this uh, the main stopping criteria that is used uh, is uh, threshold value uh, that is uh, you know rate of change of uh, you know that error uh, given the error function. So, error function typically that is by default that is used is SSE. So, the rate of change in uh, that particular function SSE is uh, going to be used uh, here. Uh, uh, as a stopping criteria right. So, uh, for example, in this plot uh, uh, when we talk about the number of epochs and this plot. So, probably instead of the epochs uh, we would like to uh, create a plot error versus uh, you know threshold because threshold uh, is the stopping criteria uh, that is the uh, that is as per the implementation of uh, this uh, neural network function. However, uh, you can see another argument here uh, the step max. So, that is also this is also something that we have discussed in previous lecture that uh, the maximum number of uh, steps that would be taken to uh, train uh, the neural network. So, uh, so, you can see 30 epochs we are taking. So, uh, uh, so in typically uh, the implementation neural net, net implementation the function that we are using. So, uh, the step, step max is given a, 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 a bigger number a large number uh, by which uh, the uh, neural network would converge and uh, so uh, typically this is given a, a large number and this becomes the last result for stop stopping the uh, learning of uh, 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 learning of uh, neural network. Uh, however, uh, it should uh, you know if, if the neural network is not able to converge even within this number then uh, we will get we will get some error in uh, this particular if we run this particular function. So, therefore, step max is gen typically used as a, as, as a just uh, you know large enough number and it is the threshold value which decides the uh, you know conversion. So, uh, of course, uh, if we have a smaller uh, if we have a smaller threshold value we would be requiring uh, a higher much higher value of a step max because our if we you know our uh, neural network model might not converge uh, might not uh, reach the optimum and uh, if we have a higher threshold value we will require uh, less number of uh, less number of steps uh, in step max argument so this experimentation we can always perform so you can see uh, you know two models we have written two uh, lines of code for we are calling neural net function twice and two models we have written so, in the first one as you can see first is MF that is the formula for our neural network modeling then algorithm we are we are we are using R prop plus uh, resilient propagation plus algorithm here and you would see threshold value is quite a small here uh, 0 .00, uh, 0 0.00009 and step max is 30 epochs. So, uh, the, the threshold value is small threshold value uh, you know is uh, because that we are using a large step max. So, of course, so we expect that our uh, model would converge and uh, we will get the uh, you know uh, we'll, uh, we, we can use the model then. The second code uh, you can see neural net fu uh, function first two arguments are same, but the threshold value you can see that it is quite high so 0 0.04. So, the model would converge quite quickly uh, and you would see uh, uh, therefore, the step max value is also smaller just so one epoch. So, uh, you know uh, you know so uh, we when we specify a particular threshold value we have to take care that the step max uh, value is good enough adequate enough to uh, you know uh, so that the model is uh, convert uh, model uh, the conversion uh, takes place. So, uh, let us run this model. So, uh, you can see other arguments are similar data training partition df2 train uh, number of nodes in the handle layer just one handle layer nine nodes learning output uh, you can see uh, you know true that is for prediction and uh, uh, there is another argument rep that is one. So, we will uh, see how rep is used uh, you know later in the lecture. Uh, so, let us run this code. So, we will get mod 1 and uh, so this has this has quickly converged. Now, let us look at uh, mod 2. So, this has also converged. Let us look at the uh, errors of uh, these two uh, models. You can see that uh, mod 1 the error is smaller than mod 2 which is expected because the threshold value was higher for mod 2 uh, therefore, less training and uh, therefore, more error. And uh, you can see these threshold is also you can see clearly the difference. 
uh, you can see the point triple zero seven nine that is point triple zero eight almost point triple zero eight that is the reached threshold value which is uh, you know smaller than the threshold value that we have given here point triple zero nine and then we can see uh, in the mod 2 uh, the value threshold value is 0 0.04 and we it has stopped at 0 0.024 so if we look at the number of steps so that were required to reach this threshold as you can see uh, just 63 steps so which are less than the number of steps that we have given but uh, uh, the way we have uh, been giving the, the, the way we have uh, initializing the step max value uh, in our co uh, call to this function uh, has been you know uh, quite close based on some experimentation so that the uh, number of steps that are required are quite close to the step max that we are specifying to be on safer side we can always specify much larger step max value however because of the experimentation you would see because one epoch uh, would have uh, in this case uh, uh, you can see in the in the number of observation 10 power 71 so uh, less than 71 that is 63 steps were required but if we look at the uh, mod uh, uh, first model model 1 uh, 539 steps were required but if we look at the 30 epoch value uh, it is much larger 2130 so uh, within 30 apex we are allowed uh, 2130 uh, uh, steps uh, however uh, only 539 were required if we run the model again probably it might take more number of steps or less number of steps so that is uh, you know how we can always uh, you know uh, do the experimentation with the sold and step max so uh, now uh, let's look at the uh, some of the details uh, for example interlayer connection weights just like we did for a uh, previous uh, you know uh, you know model that we uh, built you know in, in a previous lecture that for uh, fat and salt that cheese sampling model fat and salt score were the predictors so similarly uh, we can create uh, you know we can uh, you can see that uh, we are renaming the row, na uh, row names uh, and column names so we are changing the dimension names so in this case uh, you can see this is the so this is the value you can see here the interconnection uh, interlayer uh, connection weight so this is between uh, input layer uh, to hidden layer so these are input layer to hidden layer connection so you can see bias values first row second value is first node uh, that is uh, that is uh, corresponding to this predictor sr price and the weight values then for km then for owners and uh, it's uh, you know connection to the different nodes in the hidden layer node 9 10 11 12 up to 17 uh, and uh, the uh, corresponding weights so that is here now uh, hidden layer to output layer connection also we can see so you can see here again in this program code i have uh, renamed the dimensions row and column so you can see here since we had just one output node price so you can see node 18 uh, price in the column and all other uh, you know in the row, row side we have bias and others uh, node 9 to node 17 or the hidden nodes hidden layer nodes and you can see the connection rates and bias values so uh, so this is this was these values are for the uh, model one now we are uh, interested in looking at uh, the results the predicted value the actual value and other things uh, we can uh, run this particular code uh, so uh, i have created data frame or predicted value so the result would be captured here uh, in net result uh, element of uh, this uh, uh, mod 1 and actual value and the remaining of the predictors in the training partition so you can see these are first six observations so you can see predicted value and actual value so uh, you can see in most of the cases uh, the predicted value is quite close to the actual value so now what we uh, can do is uh, let's look at the performance so we'll use uh, this uh, package r minor and uh, then we'll compute some of these uh, matrix uh, sse rmse and me uh, so let's compute these values so the first one is for the training partition so as you can see here so these are the value for the training partition and uh, and uh, then we'll compute the values for the uh, for the uh, uh, second model. So this was for the first model. Then let's compute for the second model. 
So, these are the values for second model. So, you can see that uh, RMSE value is smaller in first model in comparison to second model because uh, over training has happened in case of first model. Uh, now, what we will do, we will uh, look at the uh, performance of uh, these two models on uh, uh, test partition. So, for this we have uh, till now in other techniques we have been using predict function to score the test partition, but in this case this particular package neuron net and uh, we have compute function to score the uh, test partition observation. So, we will use compute and then uh, other arguments are quite similar first model object and then the uh, test uh, partitions. We will score this, we will compute these matrix SSC, RMSE, ME, print them. So, this is uh, with respect to uh, the first model you would see that uh, uh, RMSE value was 0 0.01 for training partition, but it is 0 0.16 uh, in the test partition. So, from here we can say that uh, the model has overfitted to the data. Uh, so, uh, or fitted to the noise. So, we can see that uh, the error in uh, test partition is 10 times more uh, than uh, that of in the partition. So, this is for the model 1 and uh, let us look at the performance uh, using model 2. So, uh, value is 0 0.21 in the uh, for the test partition and we will look at uh, the value for the model 2 0 0.024. So, even in this case uh, you would see that uh, uh, the uh, performance of uh, the model is uh, quite poor uh, even though less uh, uh, training has happened just one epoch just uh, you know uh, I think uh, about 60 uh, about 60 uh, uh, observations. So, we can look at the previous results uh, epoch value of our, our epoch uh, this uh, conversion number of steps that we had seen. Uh, 63. So, just 63 steps and uh, uh, so even after that uh, uh, the uh, second model also seems to have overfitted to the data or it might be under trained. So, there are there could be two scenarios either because the only 63 steps were used. So, uh, more likely scenario is this uh, that this program model was under trained and because of that its performance on uh, test partition is poor. However, in case of first model, it seems to be over trained and because of that its uh, performance uh, is uh, uh, poor on test data. So, one model, model 1 is uh, over trained and the model 2 is under trained and that is uh, very that can be seen from the number of steps that have been used and the threshold value that were used uh, in these two uh, cases. So, uh, now let us look at uh, the uh, diagram plot model 1. So, let us uh, look at this. So, for model 1 this is the uh, this is the network diagram that we have. So, you can see here uh, all 8 predictors are price came up to uh, automatic transmission or to T and you can see different uh, connecting arrows from input layer nodes to uh, hidden layer nodes and we can also see the bias node. Uh, bias uh, values uh, you know bias node uh, and the connect connected to the hidden layer nodes and the bias values and then from hidden layer nodes connections are there to output layer node and then there is another bias value bias node right. So, uh, uh, so this is uh, what we have so you can see that. So, now uh, so as I talked about that uh, uh, two models. So, one model is overfitting and the second model is underfitting. So, what else can be done? So, there are as I talked about a number of experimentation uh, can be performed in neural network modeling. So, next is uh, whether we can change the number of uh, hidden layer nodes. So, let us see what happens if we increase the number of hidden layer nodes. So, since uh, we have already uh, uh, you know uh, build one model, model 1 which had 9, uh, nine uh, hidden nodes in the in the layer. So, as uh, still it was overfitting. So, therefore, we expect if we create a model with 18 hidden nodes. So, this one is also going to uh, this one also uh, this one is also going to overfit to the data or fit to the noise. So, we look at the uh, uh, this particular model 3 that we are going to create uh, look at the uh, arguments. So, threshold value you can see now this time this is much uh, smaller. So, earlier one was 0 0.0009 that we had a specified. 0.0009 yes. Now, you can see here 0 0.0007 uh, 
and the steps are same. So this is because uh, since we will have a more number of hidden layer nodes, so of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, the model would converge even at a, a lower threshold value and is still keeping the, uh, you know, uh, same number of step max, uh, you know, value. So, we are uh, having in, we are passing a, a quite tighter value for step max and within this, uh, you know, uh, value of step max, we are trying to, uh, you know, get uh, the highest possible threshold uh, that can be used. So, of course, uh, it will lead to overfitting. So let us run this. So, it did not converge. So, let us again run, not converge even this time. So that's uh, one more time, not not converging. So what we'll do? We'll increase the threshold value to uh, from seven to eight, and we'll run it again. And you see that immediately it converged. So uh, you can see even uh, after you know uh, increasing the number of hidden load hidden layer nodes from nine to eighteen. If we look at in terms of threshold value, uh, the earlier threshold val value was point triple zero nine. And it was it, it, uh, it uh, converged, and in this case it is just 0 0.008. So just uh, you know uh, one uh, you know uh, fourth decimal point one uh, unit decrease there, and uh, we have increased the number of nodes. Uh, and we have doubled the number of hidden layer nodes. Now we look at the error value. Now this is much lower. So you can see 0 0.0035. We look at the uh, earlier uh, value. Uh, error value in uh, past model, you can go back and you can see the error was 0 0.0048 and here what we have 0 0.0035. So, error is much less uh, since this threshold value is also uh, the uh, threshold value at which the model has converted is, is lower and you, you can see the number of steps now more number of steps 1674 uh, were required uh, for this conversion to take place. Now, uh, let us look at the performance of uh, this model uh, on training partition and test partition. So, let us compute the same matrix. So, you can see now RMSE value has decreased further 0 0.0099 in this case. Now, let us look at the performance on test partition. So, again you can see that uh, uh, test partition the performance has uh, be, uh, become much worse. Uh, so, you can see that uh, now the RMSE value is 0.46 and uh, it is uh, you know uh, you know uh, about uh, uh, it is much uh, uh, more uh, much higher uh, much times higher in comparison to the previous case. So, overfitting has increased if we compare this model 3 with model 1. So, we can see that performance on uh, uh, new data validation data is worsening and uh, as reflected in the RMSE value. So, uh, what uh, what uh, we need to do to find out the uh, best model. So, uh, what we will do now, we will uh, build a model uh, using uh, certain experimentation. So, what we are going to use uh, the rep argument that uh, we had kept as 1 in uh, previous modeling we will make it 20. So, we will run the same model 20 times and then pick uh, best one out of uh, those uh, 20 runs. Now, other things also will change. So, uh, you can see here that uh, what I am doing here in this particular for loop, step max, uh, max is kept as uh, 30 apex uh, that is the highest value and uh, you would see that threshold value is now mentioned as i and I am running a, a for loop uh, using i as a counter and uh, we are going to build uh, a number of uh, models and we will test them uh, on validation partition just like this graph. So, we will create this kind of plot. So, uh, the threshold value, so we are going to do uh, perform some, we are going to uh, do some experimentation with threshold value. So, let us, uh, so these are the threshold value that uh, we are going to use, so 19 of them. So, starting from 0 0.01 uh, and then 0 0.015, then 0 0.020 and up to 0 0.1. So, we will uh, create these 19 models and uh, as you can see, uh, for each of these uh, 19 uh, threshold values, we will uh, create 20 models, uh, repetition is 20 and the best one within that, uh, uh, you know, would be picked. So, essentially for each of these threshold value, we would be picking the uh, best model based on 20 runs. So, let us uh, 
uh, and then m test is the variable which uh, where we would uh, store the error value uh, error validation error value so you can see in uh, next few lines of code so we'll, uh, you can see here the best uh, this one is being used to uh, find out the uh, the uh, out of 20 runs uh, which one is the best uh, uh, run which one is the best model and once that is selected uh, then it is being used uh, uh, to score the test partition as you can see here and uh, once that is done uh, we are uh, computing the uh, matrix value the RMSE uh, mainly and then is storing it in this Perka vector. So for all the uh, 19 models we would be storing uh, the these uh, values. So the plot that we are going to use is uh, going to be error uh, on y axis, uh, validation error on y axis and uh, threshold value on x axis. So let us initialize and test. Let us run this loop and you can also notice that number of hidden layer loads are 9. So let us run this loop. So it will take bit uh, time because we would be running uh, 20 multiplied by 19 models and uh, yes so it has all have all of them have been computed. So there were no problems of uh, convergence as we saw in earlier cases where we had to reduce the threshold value because the step max is large enough uh, to allow all the uh, you know models uh, for different threshold values to converge. Uh, so, once it has been computed, we, we are creating a data frame of threshold value and error values that have been computed. So, you can see here threshold value 0 0.01, 0 0.015 up to 0 0.1 and you can see the corresponding uh, validation error that has been computed 0.33 then it drops to 0.17 and it keeps on dropping. So, there are swings uh, if we look at uh, this particular output. So let us find out uh, where the value is minimum. So uh, you can see uh, 16 that is 0 0.085. So when the threshold value is 0 0.085, the error is minimum. However, uh, point of uh, caution here that uh, the data set that we are using is quite a small. Uh, however, uh, you know if you do certain experimentation with this loop, you know you run it again, then up is still that is still even after that, the threshold value comes around that mark 0 0.08, 0 0.085, 0 0.09. So uh, even after the smaller size, so probably this one is the uh, you know best threshold value to get the best model. And uh, so once this is identified, we can create our plot. Uh, we can identify the same thing uh, using this plot. Let us create this plot uh, error versus threshold value. So you can see here. So you can see that validation error because there are many uh, you know uh, uh, you know swings here. However, if we had a larger test partition, so these points would have been smoothed out, and we would have been seeing clear. Uh, you know minimum uh, point of minimum validation error just like this plot or uh, because we have just 8 uh, observations in the test partition so the plot is not that smooth however uh, still we can identify 0 0.085 as the uh, minimum uh, uh, you know at the point of minimum validation error. So once this is known to us we can again build uh, for our best model. So uh, as you can see that uh, typically the best model as per these results is around 0 0.0885 and uh, so we will stop here at this point and uh, in the next lecture we will uh, build our model using this particular threshold value 0 0.085. Thank you.